Hello and welcome to the Aaron Schwartz channel. We're hiking today, more over outdoor walking. And check this out, Meg found these kind of funky tweezers. They're Tweezer Man tweezers. Do you see the brand there, Tweezer Man? Yeah. They're mechanical steel tweezers. We found them in a the driveway. And we're at the Kelsey Creek Farm here. Hope you have a beautiful Saturday afternoon and enjoy the rest of this footage. Thanks for watching. Say that again. This is a hazelnut tree. You can see the hazelnuts forming here and here. Isn't that cool? If we come back when it's time to harvest, we can get some, some free hazelnuts. Semi-free, not counting. Pseudo-free? Free, then you don't have to pay a store or another. We don't have to buy them from Safeway, like the crow doesn't shop at Safeway. It's a clearing right here where you can set up a sleeping bag. Engineered staircase. Oh, even more staircase action here. Okay, I'm gonna crop the video. We're on the pipeline trail, like this, here, and it goes all the way down that way, like this. But we're actually, make a wish. <laughs> the last one was stubborn. See it? And this is the lake to lake trail here. And we're going to go down here to the Kelsey Creek Farm in about half a mile by going down this trail here. Oh, look at the future blackberries. And Meg says... Future blackberries. Look at these blackberries here. They have here. to turn into flowers before they can turn They're gonna into fruit. They're going to get pollinated by some beneficial insects and then turn into blackberries um, towards autumn or fall. And grab another one. Let's make. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, big staircase here goes down. We'll have to come back up to this here, but. Yeah, there's textured metal plates to allow better traction for your shoes. Very thoughtful of the city of Bellevue on their trail network to put such a well engineered. Uh, staircase system in the middle of the forest like this and look there's even a bench if you need rest for example and they have signage to give further orientation in terms of direction here so we, we, we go back up this way up the staircase here to go back to where we came from and at the end of that fence and we see that in loving memory of Wilma Gay Blankenship Williams here the wife and grandmother forever cherished at their estate donated this bench yeah. right a lot of states just are selfish with their Meg was saying that it's nice that some estates uh, give something back to the public good. And that's an example of one generation making the future better for the children and grandchildren by paying forward um, the benefit of their life earnings uh, into something that people in the future can enjoy, like these trails, which will probably be around for millennia. Um, hard to know the future, but um, this is just part of the forest. If you take a look around here, I'm gonna go real slow and pan. We're in the middle of a forest in the Pacific Northwest in um, Middle Bellevue. And 
Bellevue, Washington has a lot of green spaces like this, which increase the value of the neighborhoods here since it's easy to go for a walk through nature. And a lot of people, a lot of families value that. They, uh, getting out and about on foot or walking is one of the best ways to create natural fitness activity. And well, left or right? right? Generally speaking, it um, improves blood flow in the skeletal muscles and the circulatory system, especially. So a small creek right here. I heard some little critter. Oh, it's a bird hopping around. That runs along down here like this. Through the forest, right? Oh, look. That's why there's a bridge right here. The, um, the ferns are starting to unfurl all the way. Oh, I love ferns. I think they're beautiful. And um, nature, like Meg was just pointing out, if you go out with an appreciative mindset of thankfulness and gratitude, you can observe a phenomenon like a fern uh, unfurling like this, where um, as the fern plant develops, it uh, forms a fractal that perpetually unfolds like this and becomes the, the main part of the leaf. And you can, you can look at something as um, random and chaotic and natural as the surface of this tree with the moss growing on it, like that. And the beautiful three-dimensional surface structure, which you could laser scan and reproduce in 3D, but it's just as easy to come out here in nature and look at it in first person. You know what I really appreciate oh. about this hike, Aaron? Okay. My goodness. Do you know what I really appreciate about this hike? Being on it with you. Yeah, we're on a date, one of our first dates. Thank you, Miss Meg. Um, one of our first dates was hiking, and so it's Saturday morning. We. Oh, I forgot to bring gloves and a bag to harvest it. We decided that one of the best activities we could do as a date um, well, was... It, it was it was a friendship date that turned into let's be more than friends date. Exactly. And so one of the things now that we've been married for more than 10 years, we decided to do on this particularly beautiful, sunny Saturday morning is um, to go on a trail that I had noticed uh, when returning my school bus to the transportation lot on the Lake Hills connector. I noticed a trail header to this pipeline trail. And there isn't a parking lot near it, so we actually found a parking lot at a church uh, that's within walking distance of a neighborhood which has a access to the trail at the bottom of the neighborhood. And we spoke to a woman named Noreen, who has lived in her house for 44 years. And she mentioned a gentleman that has a um, rental property built into his home, but that property was occupied. And so we took a look at it and then decided that we're still going to move to the micro home on the farm because that's what God put on our heart. And when we're faithful to listen to the Lord, uh, we end up benefiting in ways that are surprising and unknowable to us yeah, I mean, in the present. And so we're just going to trust in the Lord because the woman we're renting the space from really needs the money and we really need a place to go. And so it'll be a mutualism. And it's our least expensive option at 1200 a month, which around oh, here, inclusive. and that's all inclusive too, oh. which around here is um, quasi impossible. Left or right? Kelsey Creek Farm is this way. So, again, really nicely done signage. Um, there's another engineered footbridge next to a um, kind of a swamp lake. And now they're, they're talking, it's a, it contains invasive New Zealand mud snails. And there's, picture, there's a picture of the mud snails here, what they're talking about. So they're very tiny. That's a pretty... Um, so, so if you you want to stop the spread so you decontaminate any boots or gear after contact. So they have a negative impact on fish and native invertebrates. Oh. There's no way to control them once they're established. Ooh. So we want to pay attention for dogs if they're walking through here to rinse off their feet. Now we're going to stay on this engineered wooden bridge here. We're not going to go through the swamp. No off-trailing. But you can see that the swamp is, there's stagnant wood here and very s slow moving water. You can hear running water over this way. And um, yeah, it's, so it does flow, but it's very slow moving. 
Here's a male duck that Meg spotted right here. Oh, here's his mate. And there's his female partner right they here. Are, they, they, they're, um, it's a mom and a dad. Okay. Um, pair bonded. Pair bonded. Yeah, they don't. They don't just switch. Like the male doesn't just. They're not. The males aren't promiscuous. They find a female and then they mate for life. And until one so, of them passes. And you can see over this way too, like this beautiful stream here. Meg's always appreciating flowers. Do they smell? Yeah, they smell. Yeah. The floral a soft smell. One. Yeah, soft light floral, floral smell. Kind of honey smell. Right. I Kelsey, guess we're Kelsey Creek's this way. We're, we're heading towards the, the Kelsey Creek farm here. This is where they had the uh, sheep shearing thing a couple weeks ago. And we did not attend that event, although they had a, a bus bringing people to and from a park that's nearby off of Richards Road in Factoria that's owned by Seattle University. Meg's pointing out that it's surprising that in the middle of a city there's a farm like this kind of hidden in the middle of the city. Oh, don't get me wrong, I'm thankful for it. I just, it's surprising. It's known as Kelsey Creek Farm because it's along the Kelsey Creek in this swampy area down here where these engineered trails and fencing are located. So here's the address, 410 130th place northeast in Bellevue. This is the Kelsey Creek Park. And you can see there's horse riding, picnic, hiking, jogging, and playground equipment. So we're stopping for an appreciation moment. What I'm gonna do here is slowly pan across the farm so you can see what it looks like here. The meadow area in the lowlands. We're just looking over the fence at the greenscape here. It's a lot of natural green color. Here's an example of blackberry it has a tenacious vine growing propensity and it will actually weave itself into oh, yeah. a fence like this. And what's cool <laughs> is at least it gives up really flavorful berries. Yeah. You can see the start of which happening right here. So these are the botanical buds that eventually become blackberries after, um, they, go through the after they go through the flower development cycle. Mm -hmm. so you can weed. see another example right here. There's a noxious weed right here. I don't remember Ma what they're called, but they put out those nasty little dots. Uh, Meg seeds. found um, a and noxious look, invasive weed. This is a spit weed. bug. And that's a spit bug. Notice it has kind of... Um, a spit. bubbly spit-like appearance. Hence the name. And they I don't eat know the, the they eat the phloem or the sap of the oh, there's a plant species. Oh, there's a I don't want to pull on it. See the tiny little. That's a a new uh, this year's baby spider. You see, I don't. It, he looks like a dot on your screen by comparison. Oh, I make spotted this really tiny spider right here. Oh no, my finger. I'm sorry, spider. I didn't mean to touch your web. I'm just trying to point you out. Um. Here's another spit bug. Can you put your finger near him again? I can't focus. Okay. Yeah. Like right above but, yeah. my thumb. Okay. Oh. Uh, it, um, it's cottonwood. Cotton cottonwood. Yeah. It's the seeds. And actually, of the cottonwood. if you pick it up carefully, you can see there's like a there's a stem in the middle. So and then those are the seed. The seeds are um. If you pull the cotton away, which helps it float in the air, you can find the seed and that's how it spreads um, its seeds. Oh, look, it looks like a heart. Isn't that precious? So cottonwood, this is a, a reproductive strategy to have this kind of wool. Because if you see if I drop it here, it's light and it carries in the wind easily. Oh, darn. Meg's gonna demonstrate some of how it breaks up in the air. Like that. But you can see how it catches air currency. Three, two, go ahead.
I can't do two at a time, Aaron. That makes it. Fine. They're, they're already there. actually required but under Washington Washington state law an equine equine or, professional equine. or equine sponsor is liable of an is injury not liable. is not liable for the injury to the death of a participant in or. equine activities resulting from the inherent risk of equine activity so basically if you ride a horse and get injured it's your fault so do so carefully this is the barnyard Buttercups. They're eating all the buttercups. It's cute. Oh, here's That's a pig. And the pig is a look at look at the pig. The pig is rummaging through some soil for something to eat. Is that a goat? Yeah. Pig me goat. So if you're interested in doing their summer day camp, call that phone number right there. It's part of the Bellevue Parks Community Services. This barn was built in 1943. So if you um, you want to see what it looks like wide here, we'll go, we'll go all the way wide. Oh my goodness. There you go. There's a gigantic barn complex and they have a porta potty and a hand washing station. This is an example of a large picnic area <clears throat> that you can reserve and it has a metal grill and picnic tables recycling and trash I saw clearly clover, but I didn't. Oh, there's a hole in the ground. <laughs> you want to sit at this table for uh, some of our snacks? Sure. Let's, let's have a snack. Some water and a snack. Some water and a snack. 
It's homemade trail mix. It has dates. Oh my gosh, I just... Brazil nut? Brazil nut. I was thinking of what your mom called them. Hazelnut, walnut, and organic cranberries. I don't know if that really makes a difference. And then I think I said it all. Hey, Aaron, you want to date me? These are healthy fats that are good for your brain. Mm -hmm. And their skin and your eyes. And you can soak them in hot water and then blend them with nuts to make a healthy nut bar with dates. Oh, I forgot to mention that there's also chocolate chips. That's just so fun. There's not many. There's more nuts than anything else. But that's a fun bonus. It's almost one, two, three, four, see? Yeah. This is my ten dollar digital sports watch. It's but four minutes. Has long. a ten year battery. Can you believe that? It's my cheapest wristwatch and I like it a lot. Okay. This is kind of similar to the one I had as a child that my friend Matthew's mom, Carol, gave me. Well, it's a much newer variant of, of that Casio wristwatch. I'm only largely bought this one inspired by that. And it's all Palmer. It's a cheap digital sports watch. It's got all kinds of features and functions too. Timers and alarms. And you can use it as an alarm clock. It goes beep, 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 beep. I love you too, Miss Maker. I believe. In God. Ma well, yes. But I believe that married people should still go on dates. And that dates don't have to be expensive. The nut mixture is from stuff we bought mostly from Costco. In bulk. And we threw it all in this container and jiggled it up. So it's not, it, was a, it was a homemade trail mix. And we... <clears throat> yeah. Now we're just enjoying nature and a farm, spontaneously. We're not going out to some five-star restaurant because we can't afford it, but also, who cares about that sort of thing? This is more important, quality time. All right, right. and this right here, and Meg's version. Mine's smaller. I'm gonna show you. So, in here, I have the world's best beverage. Oh. I'm trying to tip it. Well, actually, this is Zip Fizz. I was going to say water, but I put a fruit punch Zip Fizz. Mine's water. Meg has water in hers. Ooh, can I have some of your Zip Fizz? She wants some of my fruit punch Zip Fizz. That's not a naughty joke. It's just a drink mix. Electrolytes and caffeine. I taste good, too. And then... We'll try to zoom into the water here so you can tell the future if you just look into the, the water, like Nost Nostradamus here. And you see that Mine's Vladimir Putin water. is losing the war in the Ukraine, and the Ukraine wins. And we then hope and pray. we help the Ukraine rebuild. And Vladimir Putin publicly apologizes before he's executed for crimes against humanity. I'm just kidding. Water is really cool because it, it has optical properties. Mm, but maybe there should be a severe punishment for what he's done. I find it intensely um, upsetting what Vladimir Putin's doing in the Ukraine personally. I think most people do. Mm. Mm. Homemade trail mix is better because everything's more fresh than a, a pre-mixed trail That's mix. That's right. It hasn't been sitting on the shelf mm -hmm. for five years. <laughs> Oxidizing. This section is called Requiem for an American Dream. I want you to look at that flag in the background right there. Like a faded moon or... A GI who lost his life fighting for freedom in America, 
only to come home to currency inflation and housing prices that are unaffordable. That's not the America I put my life on the line for, mm. that my forefathers fought to protect. Especially that, because people are so ungrateful and for the I, sacrifice. I want to say that as an American, I am hoping that the future will be better than the present and that we'll address a lot of the problems with Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security and we'll make housing more affordable and improve the currency and actually make America better. That would be nice. And you know how we do that? By working together so that selfish, arrogant politicians aren't the one in charge, but we the people have to rebuild America at the city level, well, in and, your community, and, and in your we, home. And who we vote for and can impact. The most important vote of all is where you spend your money. Mm -hmm. Because when you spend money, you're telling businesses how to change the economy. And those right. businesses bribe senators and congressmen. <laughs> so that indirectly affects the laws that are passed. So you're voting with your feet and your wallet. And that has a huge effect. And I want you to think about that because frugality is intelligent. You know, going for a walk or a hike isn't free, but it's almost free. And you can do it almost anywhere. You could be in a rural UAE in the desert and go for a walk. You could be in the high mountains in the Himalayas. You can be in middle Bellevue. You could be on the surface of the moon. Astronauts in spacesuits went for a walk on the surface of the moon in the 1960s and early 1970s. And they had a little electric buggy rover. Actually, NASA sent three of them, and they're still there. And we're going back to the moon with mission Artemis with an Artemis program. Meg wants to show a Brazil nut for some reason. I was just being silly. Oh, she's just being silly. I was gonna actually give it to you. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, being patriotic means making decisions now that are good for our children and grandchildren. And that includes developing nuclear reactors that enable us to phase out coal power and fuel breeding in um, IFR reactors that is virtually endless and renewable and new forms of solar and wind power and energy storage, electric vehicles with solar on the roof. You know, there's many emerging technologies like heat pumps that are energy efficient at moving hot or cold air for warming in the winter or cooling in the summer. There's a lot of cool stuff. There's biodynamic farming techniques, water conserving techniques, compost, wood chips, mushroom soil. Yeah, we can, we can literally improve everything. Mm -hmm. Try to remain hopeful and optimistic. Sometimes you just improve one little thing at a time. Like you can kick a rock out of the road so it doesn't chip someone's window or someone doesn't trip on a stick. You can push off the trail. Meg's talking about how we can each make a meaningful small difference every day, no matter where we're at. It doesn't always have to be some big, gigantic, um, monumental thing. Sometimes just the act of picking up a piece of trash and putting it in the cur correct receptacle, whether that's recycling or trash or compost. Or doing a random act and, of and kindness. I, and I believe that when you purposefully do that without being acknowledged, because that's the problem in today's society. Everybody wants to be seen. Oh, here, I'm going to do this this kind act, but I want to be on film so I can put it on YouTube. The special that's snowflake. True. That's not, a, that's a, not a true mm -hmm. benevolent act because they're doing it for recognition and their reward is here on earth. There's no reward stored up in heaven for people who constantly want the credit. And while I want to encourage others to do those things, I'm not gonna toot my own horn when I do them because I want my reward to be in heaven, not here on earth. And having character virtue means you do the right thing even when no one else is looking. Mm -hmm. In secret, in private, you're still doing in the fact, right thing that, that you know it, is good in your heart. That makes it better because you're choosing to not be recognized and you're choosing to do something that others don't see but God sees. Because God knows everything. He sees everything, even our inner motivations, mm -hmm. our inner thoughts, the thoughts of our heart. Yeah. He can tell everything about everybody. Nobody can hide anything from God. 
God's bigger, stronger, faster, smarter, and more capable than any other entity in all of existence, known and unknown in every dimensional layer, as the supreme, excellent, most sublime being of them all, who's consistent, always, Amen. and endless. Amen. And that's who we're worshiping, a star-breathing God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The best father, mm -hmm. the best friend, the one who's looking out for you, who wants to do a miracle in your life. And he, all you have to do is praise and worship. He wants a relationship well, you with you. accept his son, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior. And the way we found best to connect to God is through Christ Jesus, hmm? oh, our cool. Lord and Savior. Yes. And we believe that the Holy Spirit is with us as believers to help give us insight but and intuition. But the Holy Spirit, according to the Bible, only comes once you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. So people who haven't done that don't know what it's like to have the Holy Spirit, which is tragic, in my opinion, because he's our help for, helper, our comforter. Um, if we ask for help and wisdom, he's there to provide it. And I'm thankful every day for the Holy Spirit and that God is a triune being and that and regardless of what you believe personally, because we're not telling you what to believe, I want you to tune into something that Meg told me a long time ago about forgiveness. When you hold on to unforgiveness because of something that someone else did, you're the one that gets hurt. Well, and that bitter anger. It's like a hot anger, coal. And you've got the hot coal in your hand to throw at someone, but you're the one getting burned, not the other person. Or it's like drinking poison with the intent that that poison will hurt someone else, but it's actually hurting you. And there's there's scientific proof that is proving what the Bible has been saying all along about how bitterness, unforgiveness, and other things that God calls us to not participate with lead to disease of the body. And we've learned that through being health ministry who has helped us become better versions of ourselves. And right. even the worldly science established a long time ago, and even more recently, the mind-body connection. So what you're thinking about right now affects your health and wellness. Mm -hmm. And what you're choosing right now affects your future. And there's three separations. There's separation from ourselves, separation from others, and separation from God. And any of those <clears throat> separations, whether you are have all three or one of the three or a combination of the two of the three they impact our health it's like bitterness towards a woman has been linked to breast cancer now that could be bitterness towards a close family member someone who's closer to you if i recall correctly i will say there's a small chance i might have it backwards but um I believe it's the left breast because it's near the heart. If you have bitterness and unforgiveness towards a female who is close to you, a family member, um, that's what usually is the left breast that is impacted by breast cancer. Now, if it's someone who maybe you work with, someone from church, someone from, I don't know, your neighborhood, um, that person's not as close to you, so it's affecting the right breast. Now, is there a chance I could be backwards? Yes, but there's been a lot of proof behind this because people, you know, who have been healed, and there's a lot of testimonies of healing when the woman with the bitterness and unforgiveness has forgiven the offender. Does so forgiveness is healing, if we summarize. Yeah, but... Forgiveness is healing and it's a principle that if you were to examine the life of Christ Jesus when he was a person he told people to love one another to forgive one another forgive of us our debts as we also forgive our debtors forgiveness God wants to forgive us but he requires us to forgive others and it and says in not, the Bible that if we don't forgive others he won't forgive us and it's also important to recognize I just lost my train of thought because I think you just said what I was about to say. Well, there's a requirement because it's, it's, it is, it's a two way street. You can't just say, Hey, I want to be forgiven, but I'm not going to forgive other people. That's crazy. So, and you do reap the re reward 
and, and the reward is not always good if you're choosing the wrong way. The reward might be cancer. The reward might be... And the reward of doing the right thing isn't always monetary either. That's true. Sometimes you can be blessed with a beautiful relationship to your spouse. Or a beautiful relationship with your parents. Or a beautiful relationship yeah. with your children. Or esteem in your community. more valuable. Those are things you can't buy. You can't buy the love of other people. And when you're on your deathbed, people aren't sitting there thinking, oh, I wish I had worked more. No, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't work because it is godly to work and to earn a living, so to speak. And that can be different for different people. For a farmer, he's working his land and producing a crop and a yield. Other people, they might be going into an office to hopefully make things better for other people in some way um but there's different ways that people can earn a living i wish more people were earning it the honest way there are thousands of kinds of jobs mm -hmm. literally almost something for everybody and there's labor shortages in every industry and then there's people who aren't working because they and there's a lot of lazy people who choose to. not to work and and choosing not to work is is in my opinion, appalling. It actually says in the Bible that if a man can work and chooses not to, he doesn't deserve to eat. That's true, and I agree with it. It's different if someone is injured beyond to the point of not being... We're not talking about disabled no, people no. or badly injured people. We're talking about a perfectly able-bodied person mm -hmm. who could obtain gainful employment, who mm -hmm. chooses not to in order to squander away their time doing absolutely nothing to no one's benefit and probably to their own detriment. And to the de de detriment of others. Often. Often. You know, I, I've said before, a lamp that burns to the splendor and enjoyment of no one burns to the detriment of everyone because it's a waste of electricity and all that artificial light creates sky glare that makes it impossible to look at the stars in space at nighttime. So literally, it's not putting the photons when and where they're useful. So poorly designed lamps and fixtures are the reason we have light pollution. So Think go, about that. They go from talking about working or not working to lamp fixtures. Because ultimately light pollution is from the same level of ignorant thoughtlessness that causes the poorly designed lamp fixtures to exist. Generally speaking, yeah. where you see less intelligence applied, you see solutions that are either wasteful or could be easily improved. Well, maybe though, maybe the the, the the lamp that we see they're waiting for the old bulb to burn out before they upgrade the new one so as to actualize the full life expectancy to and fully value. to fully utilize the life How cycle does, of the asset yeah and so so we don't always know when we look at someone what they might be motivated by and it's god's God's place to judge all people. And at the end of the day, everyone's going to face judgment. And I just want to try my best to honor God and to seek God for his will in my life so that I can do what's best. Because the truth is, is at the end of the day, God knows better than I do what is right for my life. Because he knows everything, how I'm fashioned and formed and how you're fashioned and formed. And how, you know, what I might find joy in, someone else might not. So maybe that's not their calling. Maybe my calling is to work with children and to grow vegetables because I love being in the garden. But maybe someone else's calling is to... Write computer software. I guess. I mean, I'm not a big fan, but... Or do road construction. Or be a plumber or an electrician. We need a yeah, society there's, of different there's a kinds lot of people. Of honorable jobs that society doesn't recognize as honorable, but we need to, to to appreciate the people who are helping to build the roofers, the contractors. They are admirable, and that is an admirable and honorable job. The truck drivers. The truck drivers. The bus drivers. Mm -hmm. These are people who are out there every day, and they're doing honest work. They're not, they're not profiting off of gains and losses. I don't respect that. Um, and that's probably not going to be popular with some viewers, but I don't care because it's, it's not honorable work. It reminds me of that Martin Shkreli fellow who bought the 
patent rights to Daraprim, which is used to treat a rare genetic disorder that causes people to accumulate copper. Mm -hmm. Oh. And it was these patients, there were several thousand, were paying $300 a month. But when Martin Shkreli bought that pharmaceutical company, he raised the price to over $3,000 a month just to basically steal money. Now he's in prison for Good. securities and exchange fraud. And he should be in prison. It's evil to take advantage of people. And we're not it's saying evil. there's anything wrong with turning a profit. It's the obsessive An profit. And it's not, the obsessive over focusing on money and well, excess profit and that's, that's evil. It's, it's a form of money. idolatrizing You're money. Worshiping money. And the wor the vain worship of money and materialism it's is empty, evil. And it's empty. It's an empty promise. To it, go ask a person. It doesn't matter how much you make if you're if you're worshiping money. Go ask a person. All the wealth of the world will still not be enough for those people. Go ask a person that's in their late 80s that has billions of dollars if the stuff in their life has any more meaning than the people in their life and listen to what they tell you. Ask them if they reflect back on their life what was the most valuable thing. And I'll tell you right now, it's not money because they realize they can't take it with them when they're dying. Mm -mm. No one can. Mm -hmm. All the gold, property, material goods, vehicles, homes, whatever you accrue, accrue or accumulate, accrue or accumulate in your life, you can't take it with you when you die. No. And it gets left behind, and it becomes other people's problem in the future. And so, big walnut. one of the most eco-friendly ways to live is to actually have less to buy less, to use less, to consume less, well, to be yeah. smart and moderate and, and reasonable. If, and if you have an overabundance, you give, don't have to hoard it. You can give back to others. You can help others where the government can't. And some billionaires do that. To, go ahead. We crush that trail mix. If you can believe it, the exact solar angle gave us shade from this tree. And I'm not kidding, like the sun is right behind there. Like right here. Okay? Now I'm going to zoom out so you can see. And there's a light breeze going through here. You can see it moving the tree branches. Look how beautiful this is. Isn't that amazing? Look at that. Meg's checking her fitness tracking function here. Oh no, uh, someone just texted me, I was just reading. Well, you were busy, so I was, I wouldn't normally read a message while I was spinning. We're on notes. full Dick Tracy mode here with these smartwatches. See, I have one too. Meg, will you, will you do the honors? And if I tilt it such like this and then unlock it like that, you can see the high is 77, the low is 56. There's links to my movement pattern and even how loud my voice is here with decibels. <laughs> and the date and day and time. It's pretty cool. It has a lot of features. I can do phone calls and text messages. And now Meg's using her smartphone and they're paired well, together. You're, you're talking to people who we don't know at the moment. And, and so what um, Apple Watch does with the Apple phone is they, they play nice together. They call it an ecosystem. Now an ecosystem means all your devices can communicate and intercommunicate data. So you can hand off a phone call from your Apple Watch to your iPhone to your iMac or your Apple Mac or your MacBook Pro or whatever it is. And you can seamlessly switch between using these devices over Wi-Fi or even over 5G LTE. I can use my phone as a hotspot and then take my MacBook Pro to work because the internet there is so slow I couldn't upload video or content if my life depended on it in a time frame that's relevant to while I'm there between routes um, or the bit rate's super ultra low. So um, even though I use Mint Mobile over 5G, it's just way faster. So I've done that and I, I only do it to upload blog postings priusblack.blogspot.com if you're interested. I have a butterfly sticker from Aaron on my phone. And so, I know Meg likes butterflies, so I, I gave her this butterfly sticker here. And, um, I covered up the Apple logo I mean, on purpose. I can't show you the back of my phone because I'm using my phone as the camera. <laughs> but um, you can still see the top of the Apple coming out of the butter. Wait, wait, wait for it. Meg's going to do a meta. 
So she's gonna show you what my phone looks like with a picture from her phone. And so you can see that I have a flower on the back of my phone, like that. I know it's kind of weird to see that, but, and those are furniture dots that I use to protect the back of my phone. A few have fallen off, which is what those strange dark spots are about. Kind so of reminds to, me of bubbles. I'll have to fix that soon, but bubbles. yeah, bubbles. And a, a school child left this sticker pack on my bus and um, they happened to all be stickers that I like. So uh, when we got new uh, clear TPU cases for our phones, uh, we decorated them with stickers because there's a five-year-old inside each of us somewhere. <laughs> and um, it's good to be young I, in heart and mind, you know. I think it's important that there are times when we need to be serious and take things seriously, but we should also allow ourselves time to play. Hey, time pull my to... finger. I'm... <laughs> that was a bright idea. See right here? I had a light bulb moment right here. See? There's some. She's brilliant. Well, if I'm so brilliant, why don't you let me finish my sentences? I was participating with what you were talking about in oh, real time. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, we have to we have to get moving again because that's yeah. why we have skeletal muscles so we can move. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to tell you something about being sedentary. Remember earlier when I was talking about the risks of or the benefits of going for a walk. I, it, there are risks of like spraining your ankle or something, especially if you've been inactive for a long time. Well, you go easy and gentle at first. But if you, if you go, go right. easy and gentle at first, it doesn't have to be something crazy. No. Um, so we're gonna repack my backpack no. here. Well, we were putting the Not that one. For... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the big pouch for documents. <laughs> This here is the pouch where we, so we put water bottles, right? <laughs> so and then matches. we put the trail mix between the bottles like that. And then uh, zip it up. And uh, and then I wear that one while we're hiking. Meg, don't forget your phone and glasses. I was helping you put the backpack on because I'm a gentleman. Meg was helping me. She's a gentlewoman, like a gentleman, but a lady, you know? Okay, so I want to tell you something that is true. Now, it is true that we sat at this bench right here to eat lunch, right? But um, when we're up walking around, that's known as activity. Now, fitness is when you're walking around so intensely that you build a body sweat and your heart is pumping and you're breathing so fast that it's hard to speak more than a few words without taking another breath. That's exercise. Fitness and activity can be a hike through Middle Bellevue to Kelsey Creek or whatever on a hiking trail, right? And Apple keeps track of both based on your heart rate. Let's start it up. So here, let's see. Uh, Meg will show you how this works. Resume. You can also pause it. But so you I can pause it. and resume, all right? So we've been out walking for about 23 minutes. And there's all kinds of beautiful wildflowers like this on the ground. I love these flowers. See, they're everywhere like this. And it adds, that's, um, instead of just grass, if you have uh, ground cover like this it gives animals stuff to eat and um, animals on a farm like to eat different weeds and stuff they're not supposed to just eat grass especially not cows it's biodiversity and our animals need biodiversity just like humans that's right because the different shrub species on the ground have different vitamins and nutrient profile so it creates a different uh, nutritional spectrum and now as a farmer and and I mean this I would give my animals uh, nutritional supplements. It depends um, on if they're getting what they need or not. And it's usually just in the winter. Just like a, a multivitamin. But it's usually in the winter that they need it, not spring and summer. Meg and I take multivitamins for the same principle. And the Union of Concerned Scientists says that um, vitamins are probably, we use, we use the New Chapter brand because they're really high quality. Um, but... Uh, a vitamin, generally speaking, a multivitamin, is going to make up for nutritional deficits because the food is not as nutritious as it used to be. But what I really wanted to talk to you about is a sedentary lifestyle because the thing is it's risky. And it doesn't seem like it would be risky to just sit around, but it is. And I'll tell you why. When you sit too much, your blood, your circulatory, there's around seven pints in the adult human body. The circulatory system causes blood to pool up around the legs near the bottom, near the calf and ankle. 
And if blood sits in there and doesn't get perfused actively, it causes microcapillary damage known as neuropathy. And actually, AARP, the American Associations of Retired People's Magazine, talks about this. They're known as sitting diseases. And I'm talking about lower back pain, um, abdominal hemorrhaging. So these are like um, muscle injuries in the lower abdomen in the front. Um, I'm talking about stroking uh, like a, a blood clot, an embolism or a vascular stroke. And I'm telling you right now, nobody wants any of those things. They usually just hurt people and they, they reduce a person's mobility and life quality. And a lot of it's caused by sitting around too much. And that's known as a sedentary lifestyle. Look, it's I actually a, dangerous. I found a mason bee. Look at it. In the sun here. Oh, it lost. It looks like one of the wings is damaged. Oh, little buddy. I'm sorry, friend. I bless you in Jesus' name. So I'm not giving out advice or anything, but I'm just saying if you have an opportunity to get up and go for a walk, especially after eating, um, the act of walking, right? You, you put foot, 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 bam, bam, bam. It helps to move through, you know, your gut. It helps. Here, I'm looking down at my gut this way. It helps to move so you eat something. It goes into your stomach, right? And then it has to become a liquid and go through your digestive system and then all the way down and out your butt. Well... When you're walking, boom, 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 it helps to move stuff through your digestive system. And so when you go for a walk, it actually improves digestion by helping the food move through your digestive system. And so walking is good for your circulatory system, your brain, your skeletal muscle system, your balance, the stabilizer muscles, the tendons, uh, the synovial joints. Now, I'm not talking about doing anything extreme or crazy. I'm talking about going for like a 20 or 30 minute walk after dinner or after lunch. Uh, you know, on your break uh, for 15 minutes on your break, you know, walk park further away and walk like you can introduce natural activity into your into your day. You don't have to do anything crazy or wild, oh, you know, so good. especially when the weather's nice. Meg found some really out. delicious smelling flowers. You guys smell it. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So. And, and if you have a neighbor, in fact, that's how I meet a lot of people. You know, we're out walking around and a lot of the people walking are extroverted and, and talkative and we'll just say hello and introduce ourselves. We met a woman named Noreen earlier. I didn't put her in the... I thought it was Noreen. No, no, Noreen. And she, she's probably in her 70s, given that she's lived in the same place for 44 years. And um, she was super polite. And even we mentioned that we were moving and looking for another place. But we found a place, but we're still looking. We'll always be looking because everywhere we move to is temporary. Actually, on that point, I want to remind you of something. And this is deeply philosophical, but remember that life itself eventually ends. And your life itself is temporary. So that should be a, a way of encouraging you to try to... Make the best out of every opportunity. Make the best of every day. Go out there and... I think it's important, too, that when you're making the best out of things, that you're not just being selfishly minded, like, have a selfish mindset. There's a really, I don't know the, 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 the term for it, but in the Jewish culture, people consider how they, their choices will impact others. Whereas, the, the, in a lot of mindsets in America, Australia, other, like, more industrialized countries people are more selfishly mindset and they they're like well what's good for me well no but there's it's more truth than that there's no one is a lone wolf not truly no we depend on other people for everything yeah we just walked out of the park so this is the um westmost edge of kelsey creek park where you would drive in and people frequently have picnics over in this zone as we approach the playground. Now I'm gonna cut off the video because the playground contains a lot of children and that is not the point of this video. Um, I'm just including the entrance to this park. And you can see on June 10th at Robinswood Park, there's a lake to lake bike ride. And this is the QR code if you wanna scan it from the video like that. 
I don't know if that's practical to do, but um, you see that they do birthday parties and stuff. Here's a sign that tells you they have events. You know, you can do tours and birthday parties, right? It's a very beautiful park. And uh, people do picnics and stuff here. I've been coming here since I was a child. And it's a really beautiful area. So, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a beautiful weekend. Bye-bye. Meg's examining a flower. There's a really interesting little beetle in the flower. Right on the so edge there's a there. beetle on the flower there. Yeah. Let's try to get a closer look. I saw one of those beautiful honey-colored um, bumblebees a little bit ago. Fuzzy? Yeah. It's from the, um... Oh my gosh, it's just out of... The one we were talking about earlier. The cottonwood? Cottonwood. Meg caught a cottonwood fuzzy. <laughs> you say it's a game, you just catch it midair. That's right, you can gamify almost anything to yeah. have it stay young at heart and mind and try to squeeze in some enjoyment, even random-like, into your day. And that can be a way to uh, boost your mood. Exactly. We're trying to capture the bumblebee here. There's one right here. Oh yeah. They're just okay. they're 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 working. The bumblebees are working this flower assembly here, but they move so quickly it's hard to capture. Someone asked me what my favorite animal was, and a crow is certainly it. So this is from the west-facing edge. Look how it kneels down to access the, the surface. So it gets him closer to what he wants to eat without having to bend his neck as far. It's actually really clever. that a lot of people visited. So this is what I was talking about earlier. See how the animals eat the surface plants? So the more diverse the surface is, the more nutritious their diet is. Meg's using a glucometer and she's cleaning her fingertip with an isopropyl wipe. And that's called a lancing tool. And it uses a sharp piece of metal mounted inside of a plastic spring-loaded holder to create a blood droplet. When the spring is released, the metal pierces your fingertip. It makes a droplet of blood. These are known as glucometer test strips. And what they do is they create an electrical signal that the meter interprets into blood glucose level. And you insert the strip into the head of the machine and it beeps and does a post test. And the lance is loaded like that and then... Oh wait, no. That's my old one. I don't use old ones. She's going to change out the lance needle like that. And put the cap back on. And you charge it like that, and then put on your finger like that, and she makes a droplet of blood. And then clears the droplet of blood for a fresh droplet, and then puts the blood into the end of the test strip. And you can see, it tests 
and then it shows you the blood glucose, Ooh. which is 391. So Meg needs nice. to take some insulin. Or overestimate or underestimated. And so um, this is known as a Novolog or Humalog pen. This is a Novolog pen. And you dial units and then you inject like that. And what this does is it's a hormone that tells the body to take glucose out of the bloodstream and, use it as energy. and uptake it into the muscles. It There's also is a signaling hormone to store fat, so it makes it harder for people who have to use insulin to lose weight when they want to. It makes it a lot more difficult. Not impossible, but difficult. And despite this, Meg's been using insulin since she was seven years old, and she's still trim and fit. Well, I could be more fit. That was part of why we're out doing an active activity on Saturday, is to improve our overall fitness. <sighs> but this is less um, intense and relatively flat. Uh, uh, well, when we said hike, I thought we were going to... It, gonna it is more of an outdoor walk. I didn't know when we first started. No, no, no complaints. I'm only saying. But I climbing back to our car will give us a little bit more activity yeah. than it did coming here. So. Well, and dehydration can cause higher glucose than normal. And we have extra water in the car that we brought with us in Meg's new 72 ounce vacuum insulated thermos that she bought for 20 bucks at. 24.99 at Marshalls. At Marshalls, where they have great deals if you're interested. Okay, this is interactive for children, but do all cows produce milk only after they have a baby? And that's why the picture's like that. Children are not intelligent and adults. This is for children. Why makes do us. pigs like to lay in the mud? It cools them down and prevents sunburn, which I already knew. But not everybody knows that. Yeah. 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 Hey. Hey. Hi. Hi. Do you want out? Is that what you're saying? Hi. Here. Hi. Hello she's, there. She she's hot. Uh -huh. She's panting because she's hot. Yeah. We have access to water. They're also looking for handouts. Hi, baby. I gave web to one of your friends. I don't have anything but salt on my fingers. Yeah. They I think May has, has a snack. I don't. He just licked the salt off my hand, though. Right? Or she. I don't know. Meg says she absolutely loves this yellow. And it makes her heart happy because of how beautiful it is. I want to give you a chance to have a look at that. All these beautiful flowers. Here's a close up of the same flower in the sun. See? Buttery yellow. Like that. It's actually darker than actual butter. It's pretty. I love flowers. Right in this area, it has sort of a honeycomb-like hive smell. I think it smells a beehive over here. I do. Probably a natural one. It has a honeycomb. Oh, I smell it too. Yeah. You see, it's it's, it's, it's a smell of honey. It's got to be somewhere up in this area. It's in the tree here. It's not just honey, but it's um, it's the the wax has a, a the smell specifically, which I love. Meg, you're casting a shadow. Are you going to cast it in clear epoxy? Yeah. Oh, you're casting it forward, I see. Yeah. Meg's broadcasting virtual seeds of herself onto the trail so that it may fruit forthward and produce future yeah, returns. One of my favorite flowers, but I have lots of favorites, so... Meg just likes flowers in general like I do, and so do bakers and florists. That's why they date, you know. They're into different flowers. You know why the... Uh... The baker could never get a, a date. He's too needy. <laughs> <Get> needy. <laughs>
<laughs> I mean, you can tell it just fell over naturally. It's a broken, shattered. Mango's helping cottonwood tree uh, reproduce. I don't think they really need my help. No. Yeah. It's more having fun with nature. Actually, you can see the seeds are blowing around right in front of us, right here. Look at that. They're following us. The seeds are trending, Meg. I have an idea for how to get rid of my natural gum, but I will not throw it in nature because it's not right. That's right. But I'm going to use this obliging leaf. And I'll take it home and I'll just put, deposit it where it ought to go. In the trash that, receptacle? Yeah. That dawned on me just now because I wanted to spit it out, but I refused to spit my gum out in nature. I'm feeling skeptical of all these seeds blowing around. It seems a little bit like a seedy situation. Oh, Aaron, I think you're right. Here's a nice bridge. Check this out. Isn't that cool? It's the female duck again. Yeah. Make thinks the ducks are nesting under the bridge. Well, it would be safe from like predators seeing them from. Yeah, and they don't have to pay property taxes like that. <laughs> No, they don't. No PSE bill either. Mm. We took a left into here. We go right. No, we have to go that way. You took a left in. You mean we need to take a left out? Yeah. We took a right in. That's what I meant. Yeah. I'm giving reverse Polish notation directions. Oh, look. We love those. You just normally see them in a big open field versus like in the middle of the forest. There's an animal hole. Like sage. sage. But I happen to think these flowers here, it's kind of windy. Um, it's all stabilized, but I think these flowers are really beautiful. They're uh, absolutely beautiful. And don't forget to ring that bell! Woo!